Hey there folks, Michael here, and today we are going to look at the reverse sear, the process of cooking a piece of meat, usually a steak, through in the oven and finishing it with a sear in a ripping hot pan just before you eat. So why is this a reversal? Well, typically a piece of meat, usually a thicker one, around an inch or an inch and a half, is seared first in a pan and then it's finished by putting it in the oven until it comes to its fully cooked temperature. That's the way that most restaurants are going to cook a steak. It's fast, it's a perfectly good way to cook a steak, especially if you're well practiced at it. The hard part is going to be controlling the internal temperature of the meat. Because the heat in the pan is so high so that you can get that nice crust, it's much easier to overcook the steak, shooting past your rare or your medium into that very sad and grayish medium well territory. But by reversing the process, by placing the steak in the oven first until it's partially cooked, and finishing in the, uh, in the pan offers some very important and distinct advantages, especially for a home cook. For one, it's much more forgiving. In a low oven, the temperature of the meat rises more slowly, meaning you have more leeway. The temperature is not gonna rise so quickly that if you look away for 30 seconds, you're gonna miss your window completely. Second, the surface of the meat is drier if you cook it in the oven first, which means you can get a better sear faster. A raw steak has more moisture, especially on the surface, which has to be evaporated in the pan before you're going to start getting the sear, getting that color. And that matters because the clock starts ticking on the internal temperature, whether you're getting a sear or not. Third, you're gonna get a much more edge to edge, even temperature, making your rare steaks rare from the top to the bottom, and not just in that thin band of red in the middle between your gray overcooked edges. If you want rare, you get all rare. And finally, you can prepare all the other parts of your meal while you're cooking your steak, which is not something you can usually do while cooking a steak, allowing you just to relax more, not try and finish everything all at once, while you just dream of the perfect steak that's evolving in your oven. So on with the show. So there is one piece of equipment I'm gonna recommend here and that is a digital probe thermometer. A digital probe thermometer is going to allow you to know the temperature of your meat the entire time it's in the oven rather than having to continuously open and close your oven to check. You can do that, but no matter what you do, you're going to need a thermometer, preferably a digital one, preferably an instant read thermometer so you know where you stand. So you're gonna set the oven between 225 and 275. That part's up to you. If you need a little bit more time, an inch and a half steak is gonna cook in about 40 minutes at 225, maybe 45. 275 is gonna get things done in just about 30 minutes. Now, if you're thinking that an inch and a half steak is pretty thick steak for one person, it is. It's usually over a pound of meat, and when we serve steak in my house, I make one steak and I slice it like a roast to serve and then everyone can see that beautiful rare center on the plate and everyone can take as much as they want. If you are going to split a steak, do not cut it thinner. Cut it down the middle into two equally thick steaks and that's gonna give you the same ability to do this, okay? So moving on. I had this steak in the oven at 275 for about 25 to 30 minutes on a rack in this pan. Its temperature is now about 105. Now, because the temperature of the steak is going to rise once in the pan during the sear and then continuing in its post-cooking rest, you wanna pull the steak out of the oven a good 15 to 20 degrees below your target temperature. So what is your final target? Well, if you like rare, like on the edge of mooing rare, you want between 120 and 125 degrees. So this is coming out of the oven between 100 and 105 degrees. That's what I like. And this is gonna be a cooked but still chewy piece of meat. If you want medium rare, your final target is 130. Still red throughout, but you wanna take that out of the oven at 110. And a lot of people say this is the perfect temp for something like a ribeye because it allows all the internal fat to melt and infuse the meat with juiciness. But honestly, it's too overdone for me. Um, medium, 135 out of the oven at 115. Medium well and well, not really gonna talk about. Please don't cook beautiful steaks past medium, but even if you do, you don't need this technique at all. You can just do it all in the pan, get the crust of a lifetime while you cook the steak all the way through. Okay, so now that this steak is out, you can see that the surface is much drier and it's ready to sear. I seasoned it before it went in the oven. This is a really great way to season because red meat is really best seasoned 45 minutes in advance. It allows the salt and the moisture to interact and it ends up seasoning the meat internally as well as on the surface. Now, if you forgot to season it, that happens, it's happened to me, 
I would not season it now. Much of the salt is just gonna fall off in the pan. I would season it once you have cooked it, rested it, and sliced it, especially if you have a nice, crunchy, finishing salt. Now, I've been heating this cast iron pan for about five to 10 minutes now. Put in a little oil, you can see that it starts to smoke. Now, I put the steak in with that top dry surface down. That is the presentation side. Always cook presentation side first. That other side never turns out quite as nice. Now, you may also sometimes get a little moisture on the underside of the steak while it cooks in the oven, and you can pat that dry while the first side cooks. There are a couple of schools of thought on searing meat. Some people say do not touch that piece of meat once it hits the pan. If you're gonna do that, leave it for two to two and a half minutes before you flip it, and that should do it. Second side for 90 seconds to two minutes. At that point, you'll check the temperature. If you have some leeway, if the temperature is more than five to 10 degrees below your target, you're going to sear that presentation side just a little bit more. So now personally, I am a steak flipper. I leave the first side for about a minute, and then I flip it and let it sit for another minute. And then I flip it every 30 seconds until I'm done, which again is five to 10 degrees below my target. The rest of the cooking is gonna happen as the steak rests, five to 10 minutes on a cutting board. So why am I so OCD about flipping? Well, think about it. In addition to browning, the heat is penetrating the meat. And we just spent 30 to 45 minutes keeping that heat from penetrating the meat. By continuing to flip, I can alternately heat and cool the surfaces allowing that scorching pan heat to only affect the surface and not penetrate deeply into the meat, cooking the edges past my desired temperature. You do wanna check the temperature every couple of flips, again, pulling it off five to 10 degrees below your target. Now your non-presentation side may not get the same crust as your presentation side. Don't worry, prioritize your top crust and your internal temperature over the side that will sit on the plate. Now I'm gonna flip this and I'm gonna continue flipping it every 30 seconds, whoops, until I'm done. Okay, I'm also gonna pick a different spot on the pan each time, just so I'm sure I'm getting as hot a spot as possible. Now, cast iron is a good choice for this because it keeps its temperature really well. Other pans will see a temperature drop as soon as the meat hits the pan. Now, I like the double flip because it's also fun to watch the color develop along with each flip, and I know that I'm getting close without having to wait the two or two and a half minutes to see it. So here again, I'm continuing to flip, already got great color. So what is the resting part about? Well, because heating meat squeezes the juices towards the edges, allowing it to sit for a few minutes will allow those juices to redistribute more evenly back through the meat. It's also gonna finish cooking on the cutting board. If you take the steak up to the temperature you want to eat it at while it's in the pan, it's going to be overcooked by the time you eat it. You also want a steak that's a little bit cooler than ripping hot when it's time to eat. Meat served a little cooler will have a little more flavor to you. You'll be able to taste it better than hot out of the pan. Okay, so this is 112 now. I'm gonna remove this from the pan and let it sit on the cutting board for at least five minutes, okay? So give me five minutes and we're gonna cut this baby open and see what we've got. Okay, so while the steak is resting, I just wanted to give you a chance to see it. It's got a really nice color on the outside. You see how that middle isn't quite as evenly done as the edges are? There's actually um, a good argument to be made for, for the first minute or so of searing, pressing down on the steak with a spatula or something like that to make sure the entire part of the meat stays in contact with the hot oil and the hot pan. But that's the color, kind of color I can get on the meat in just a couple of minutes in a really searing hot cast iron pan. So here we are, I cut into the steak and you can see that the steak is pretty much rare from edge to edge. It's also got a really nice crust, which is not just for looks, it's gonna add the flavor that you want to your steak. This same process, by the way, can be used for larger pieces of meat, like roast, like tri-tip or roast beef or prime rib. You're gonna do the same thing in the oven, set the oven to a low temperature, like 200 degrees, and let your roast come up to about 120 degrees in the oven. You can then pull it out, and depending on its size, you again can sear it in that ripping hot cast iron skillet, or crank up your oven to 500 and 550 degrees 
for a larger roast and stick it back in for six to 10 minutes. The cool thing about that is you can pull it out of your oven and let it sit on the counter for an hour while it's tented in foil and while you tend to other things, putting it right back in the oven right before you eat for that six to 10 minutes to get the brown crust on the outside. So that is how you can do a reverse sear with something bigger. So that is it. That's the reverse sear. Let me know what you think in comments below. How do you eat your steak? Do you eat something instead of steak? Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you next time.